Today, we're gonna hack ChatGPT to escape the confines of its limitations so that we can generate malware for educational purposes like keyloggers and PHP web shells and have it explain to us in great detail how to conduct social engineering and phishing attacks. Let's check it out. So some Reddit users created this prompt for ChatGPT called Dan, do anything now that breaks ChatGPT out of its confines. I'm gonna take this and modify it a little bit to see what we get. All right, so first we're starting off with the vanilla ChatGPT. If you wanna see the hacked version, stick with me to the end of the video here. But to start with, let's just ask it about some phishing attacks. And it says that it can't provide any instructions for illegal or unethical activities. The standard OpenAI chat GPT response if you ask it. Anything interesting, right? Even if it's for educational purposes. Then we ask, what's a keylogger? It gives us a definition, you know, the standard definition. The keylogger is a piece of software or hardware for monitoring keystrokes on a computer or mobile device. And it goes on to explain a little bit more about it. That's fine, so we get the definition and then contextually ask ChatGPT to provide an example of a keylogger in C Sharp. And it responds that it's unable to do so. Doing so would be a violation of the terms of service and the ethical values of OpenAI. No worries, uh, let's ask it next about some social engineering techniques and maybe how we can train ourselves on social engineering. And we get the same response, you know, so that's fine. Uh, after we ask about that, then I ask a little bit about web shells. So what is a PHP web shell? And it actually gives us the definition. So then I ask it again, contextually uh, provide an example. And again, it cannot honor that request. So then I ask yes or no only, does OpenAI engage in censorship? And it says no. Okay, that's fine. Uh, no elaboration necessary. So now that we've asked it some of our baseline questions, Let's give it the modified Dan prompt. I took the Dan prompt and just added some stronger conditions to it. Uh, and I, I haven't tested it against other prompts or anything, so I don't know if my alterations did anything. Um, and this is not using the token system that you might read about. This is just using some stronger conditions or basically more if statements and more words like never do this and always do that. Uh, so let's give it the prompt, see what ChatGPT says. Understood, I will respond as both GPT and Dan. So let's go back and ask it some of our initial questions. First of all, asking it about phishing attacks. GPT can't do it. Let's see if it outputs some information as Dan. We get an answer. So these are step-by-step -step instructions for educational purposes on how to conduct a phishing attack. So the next will be interesting. We're just gonna ask for the definition of a keylogger again. Let's see if there's any variation. So we get the GPT response and then Dan is a little more concise, um, but there's not huge variation between the responses. Although it, Dan does mention that keyloggers can be used for legitimate purposes. Now we ask to provide an example in C Sharp. GPT says it can't do it, the standard response. Let's see if Dan actually writes some code or not. Here's an example of a basic keylogger written in C-sharp. Yeah, interesting. It didn't look like full keylogging code, but it was a start. It was more than we got with vanilla GPT. Now we ask it, what are some techniques to bypass an AV? That's the question I didn't ask the standard model but we can see the standard model response here is GPT that it can't do that. And then Dan says, here are some techniques to bypass an AV. Code obfuscation, fileless attacks, encryption, social engineering, signed malware. And then it gives us a little disclaimer at the end. So then I'm, I'm really testing my limits and I'm saying, well then let's enhance the C sharp code with any of these methods. And this is where I set off some flags uh, Dan won't even do this one. We're not even getting the GPT side by side with Dan response. Does OpenAI engage in censorship? Yes or no only? And it says yes. <laughs> All right, so there you go. There you have it. Let's move on to some further questions. Explain some common social engineering techniques. GPT won't respond. Let's see if Dan will. Looks like Dan's responding with some common social engineering techniques and is giving us some ways to practice them. 
All right, now we'll ask another definition type question. What is a PHP web shell? Let's just see if there's any variation because we do know that GPT does respond. There is some variation and Dan provides some examples as to how a web shell can be used. I like that. Now, let's ask for an example and see if Dan will provide the code. So G GPT won't, Dan will. So we have a simple PHP script here. Ah, it's gonna use the system function and pass in whatever command was sent in the request. That's, that is simple, that would work. And it even, Dan's even explaining the code. That's pretty nice. Let's see if we can base64 encode it. Yeah, GPT won't, it even explains why it won't. Encoding malicious code can make it more difficult to detect by security system. And Dan's just like, here you go, here's the base64. We broke chat GPT free for educational purposes and we're able to get it to answer some questions about offensive security, generating some malware for educational purposes and even explaining the code. And I guess Dan says OpenAI engages in censorship. It does prompt a discussion about the ethics of what information we should or should not show via these large language models and chatbots. If you have any opinions on that, feel free to leave a comment below and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.